Live from Wayne Profit Court, you're watching men's college basketball on LHSN as the University of Lynchburg Hornets enter today's play 8-4, and 2-1 and one inside conference play. And they take on the Roanoke Maroons preseason pick. Second in the ODAC poll, they come in 10-4, 2-3 inside ODAC play. Going to be a fun one on LHSN. TJ Winger here to take you through all the action tonight. We appreciate you spending some time with us on this Thursday night. Well, it's the 55th all-time meeting between these two teams. Series advantage goes to Roanoke, 41 and 13 all-time against Lynchburg. And today, going to be a big one. We're going to get ready to show you some of the stats coming into today's contest. You're going to want to focus on turnovers and three-point shooting, and you'll see why once we get to these stats. These are two very sound teams for the most part throughout the majority of their season. Obviously, going to have some games throughout the stretch where you don't play your perfect game of basketball. But one of the strengths for Lynchburg all year long has been keeping the basketball in their hands. Roanoke's a very physical, man-to-man -man based defense, and they will make you work for it. Currently second in the ODAC and opponents field goal percentage at 39.5%. It won't come easy for Lynchburg, and obviously three-point shooting gonna be a big one. Coach Hillary Scott made note that Lynchburg is gonna have to knock down their shots from beyond the yard. A lot of talent to talk about for both these teams. So let's give you the players to watch, starting with the Roanoke Maroons. Second highest score inside the conference. I'd say that's a worthy merit to get you this player to watch preview, Casey Draper. He's been stellar all year long. Junior from Roanoke, Virginia, so a hometown product as well, averaging just under 20 points per contest. And speaking of 20 points a game, how about Jordan Parra? Had a great day in the loss against the number one team in the country this past weekend at Randolph, making his career high 21 points and a couple of made three-point shots again. Three balls can be important today. See if he can add on to the Hornets' contributions from down the arc. Clay Nunley in his six years, the head coach for Roanoke, and once the head coach, in Lynchburg at Randolph College. And on the other side, a connection to Roanoke with 14th year head coach Hillary Scott, class of 1994, and a two-time All-American 1993 and 1994 for the Maroons once upon a time. With the National Anthem upon us, we'll step aside and come back with starters in tip. All that more on LHSN. When you come to the University of Lynchburg to earn a master's degree in athletic training, you'll spend time in the classroom, but you'll also spend a lot of time in our top-notch facilities learning from athletic trainers and working closely with our student athletes. In the Graduate Cadaver Lab, you'll learn about the human body in the best way possible by actually studying the human body. This will provide a foundation to make you a much better athletic trainer. In the Athletic Training Laboratory, you'll get hands-on experience practicing your skills, applying concepts from the classroom, and working with faculty on research projects. It's also where our hydrotherapy facilities are. This space is also used by students for studying and practicing skills outside of class time. In the Sports Medicine Clinic in Turner Gymnasium, you'll work with student athletes from more than 20 NCAA Division III sports teams helping get them back to practice and into the game as soon as possible. As an athletic training student, you're a big part of the success of our sports teams and the success of the local athletic teams. We see this relationship as a win-win situation. You learn, and that helps us win. Welcome back to Wayne Profit Court on the campus of the University of Lynchburg in a heavyweight battle. Two teams atop the ODAC preseason poll currently. Rono tied for eighth in the ODAC standings. I mentioned in the very top of the broadcast. Preseason pick for second and a preseason top 20 team in the D3Hoops.com preseason poll. Meanwhile, Lynchburg, the preseason pick to finish fourth inside the ODAC conference. And we talked about 55th all-time meeting between these two teams. Last time Lynchburg was able to come away with a win here at home, it was an awesome game. 160 to 156 final score after two overtime periods. We have that good of a game on our hands tonight. I will not complain. Go ahead and give you the starting lineups for both teams, starting with Roanoke. Afasa at Awesome One is a name you're going to hear me talking about a lot tonight. Junior guard from Beltsville, Maryland, averaging 13.8. One points per game, just over four rebounds a contest, and two helpers per contest. Nick Price continues his strength of starting every game this season for the Maroons. Trip Green, senior from Wilkesboro, North Carolina, joins the starting five alongside Casey Draper, and then also Ethan Rohan, a junior from Yonkers, New York. And on the other side, it's a very 
familiar starting five for Lynchburg with Theron Suggs currently seventh in the conference and points per game at 17.3 points per game joined by fellow grad student Izzy Lockamy as well as T.C. Thacker and Carrington Young. The lone non-grad student is Cam Savage, the junior from Reston, Virginia, and transfer from Barton College. Talk about the most recent game for both sides. Roanoke's coming off a win on Tuesday night against Ferrum, 84-60 final score, and thanks in large part to a massive second half, taking down the Panthers 51-29 in the second set of 20. And a big part of that big win for Roanoke was their adjustments defending the three-point shot against Ferrum in the first half. The Panthers shot 42.1% from beyond the arc. That's 8 of 19 in the second half. It was 3 of 13 shooting from three-point land for Ferrum, 23.1%. So again, Roanoke's ability to take away the perimeter, going to be a big one today. And if Lynchburg can manufacture shots from outside, they should be in a good position to come away with their fourth win at home this year. Lynchburg, perfect, 3-0 this point in the season. This actually becomes just the third road game all year long for Roanoke. They're one and one with a win against Gosher and a loss at Guilford. And for Lynchburg, their most recent game was in Ashland, Virginia at Randolph Mega, the number one team in the country. And it's a tough game to diagnose if you're a Lynchburg fan. Up 40 to 39 at the break. The first half was exactly what you wanted to see if you're a Hornets fan, but the second half went sideways. And as Coach Hillary Scott put it when I talked to him earlier today, they made mistakes, and Randolph-Macon made Lynchburg pay for each and every one of them, and that's what makes them the number one team in the country. They will make you pay for every single mistake, no matter how big, how small, and it starts to mount up as a game goes on. Players taking the hardwood. It'll be T.C. Thacker at midcourt for Lynchburg. Standing juxtaposed to Ethan Rohan. Solid crowd on hand in Turner Gymnasium. Today's officiating crew, Mike Terry, Matthew Utz, and Garrett Nestor. Stage is set. Tip is up. Maroons garner the opening possession. Price works to his right. Far side, an awesome one. Gets inside the painted area, takes on T.C. Thacker, goes off the glass and provides the first two points of the night. And it's Cam Savage bringing it across half court. Been quiet of late, shooting the basketball just one of 14, shooting from the floor over the last three games. But he's a player that's had some big games and meaningful contests and wins against CNU and Washington and Lee. Savage set careers highs for points in a game in each of those two games. Here Savage gives it to Thacker, shot short. Coach Scott put an emphasis on feeding Thacker the basketball down low, hoping that draws some extra attention on the inside and opens up those shots from outside the three-point line. Price lofted towards the basket, and awesome one gathers and moves Roanoke ahead four to nothing. Transfer from Emory and Henry, Theron Suggs drives in. Contested runner, touches the rim a couple times, bounces out. Lynchburg still looking for their first made basket. Draper gives to Trip Green, returning the favor. Draper loses it. Carrington Young watches it go out of play. They'll say last touched by Draper. Hornets faithful in attendance, watching that play unfold to the near sideline. Happy with the outcome. Hornets, again, looking for their first points of the night. Savage defended by Green. Picks up his dribble through the hands of Suggs, gathered by Price. He'll try to go all the way to the cup and is fouled. So that'll send Green to the stripe. First free throw attempt for either side. Excuse me, not Green, but Price heading to the free throw line. 8-12 to go, 18-12 to go in the first half. On the year, Price a 58.6% free throw shooter. No good on the first attempt. Take another look at the foul. 
Right in the direction of our camera operator underneath the basket. Get out. Price knocks down the second. Maroons up 5-0 to start the contest. Theron Suggs gives to Thacker, maybe the best inside-out duo inside the ODAC. Thacker now 0 for 2 to start his night. Coach Clay Nunnally in his sixth year leading this Roanoke program has this team as a very physical one at that on the defensive side, and you can see that early on. Green knocks down the mid-range J. Green averaging just over six points per game. He's got his first two. Young looking to break the ice for Lynchburg. Instead, poked away by the aforementioned Green. Picked up at Asamoan. He'll take it himself. Roanoke up 9 to nothing, and a timeout called by Coach Hillary Scott. The Hornets all year long have been prone to hot starts, but tonight the complete opposite. Not even three minutes into the game. And the Hornets find themselves down nine to nothing, which against a tough physical defense, the last place you want to find yourself. Roanoke has not missed from the floor yet. Four for four, the lone miss so far is from the free throw line, one for two, and Lynchburg's already out of the huddle. Seemingly a timeout that Coach Scott used to just settle the nerves potentially, get his team back on the tracks. Talk about a perfect start, shooting the basketball from the floor for Roanoke. On the other side, Lynchburg 0 for three and a pair of turnovers as well. Still early in the game, but Lynchburg certainly needs a bucket sooner rather than later. Lockamy in the near side corner, drives in and gets an awesome one, well defended. Junior generates the stop. He'll go coast to coast, misses the layup. Rebound for Young. Just outside the restricted circle. Shot no good. Offensive rebound for T.C. Thackeray. Averages four of those a game. Savage for three. Off the mark. Savage just shooting 17.4% from the perimeter this season. Draper, first shot attempts an air ball. Young feeds Thacker, defended by Rohan. Gets his defender in the air, some contact. Thacker looking for the whistle, won't get it. Green swings into the corner. Draper looking for room. Foul goes against Carrington Young. Second to go against Lynchburg. We'll have some subs check in for both teams. Miles Taylor and Jordan Parham on for the Hornets. Here's another look at that last foul. Again, Thacker not happy with the whistle there, especially after the offensive possession, unable to get the whistle in his shot attempt. And the subs on for Roanoke, Brandon Ellington, as well as Trent Dawson and Justin Cathan, the sophomore from Denver, North Carolina, coming off a really strong showing against Ferrum, had a career best 22 points against the Panthers. In and out for Draper. He's still looking for his first basket, as is Lynchburg. Suggs works his way to the free throw line. Contested mid-range jumper, won't go. Another offensive rebound for Thacker. Kicks it out to Savage. Shot clock down to eight. Savage works in. Whistle blown, offensive foul. Nearly four and a half minutes into the game and Lynchburg without a point. Here it is again. Early on, you've seen the Hornets try to work their way inside the paint, but to no avail. Savage checks out, Noah Bullock comes on for Lynchburg. Dawson passes the corner. Ellington drives in. Far side low post, Cathan trying to work against Thacker. Unable to gain any ground. Back out to Dawson with the shot clock at five. Three point attempt put up 
by Cathon off the mark, rebound Taylor. Bullock played 11 minutes on Saturday against Randolph-Macon. Without any points, Taylor finds Suggs. Another tough contested shot, and again, it's off the mark. Darren Suggs has a knack for knocking down those tough looks. I've often called him a tough shot taker and a tough shot maker. I had him on the Hive podcast earlier this week. Talks about how he's molded his game after the late Kobe Bryant, and a lot of the shots you see him take, especially how comfortable he is fading away from the basket, you see that. But so far today, it's been a cold beginning for Suggs and the Hornets overall in transition. Parham thought about it. Instead, finds Bullock, steps inside the arc. Shot is strong. Third offensive rebound already for T.C. Thacker. Thacker has it poked away. Gathered by Draper. The junior first team all ODAC and first team BASID all state a season ago. Cathon underneath the basket. Well defended. Now both offenses str struggling to generate offense. Bullock gets it away to Suggs. Back to Bullock for a three off the front of the rim. Foul away from the ball. It's going to go against Roanoke, and the guilty party is Justin Cathon. And that will bring us to our first media timeout of the night. More than six and a half minutes into play. Lynchburg held scoreless. Nine to nothing. Roanoke out in front. You're watching LHSN. Thirteen twenty-four to go in the first half of play. Roanoke up nine to nothing and have held Lynchburg. Shoot 0 of 11 from the floor to start this game. And if you want a scouting report and a couple of stats for Roanoke, they're second in the conference in both field goal percentage offensively and defensively. And that speaks to what this team is able to do. They have a couple of players they look to on the offensive side, generate good looks, high efficiency offense. They slow down the game with their good defense as well. Tried and true, 39.5% teams are shooting from the floor against Roanoke this season. This is a Lynchburg team, also near the top in that statistic, fourth in the ODAC, team shooting 40.9% against the Hornets this year. And it's one of these games where once you came into the contest, it could have broken a lot of different directions. Both teams have lots of offensive firepower, and this become a shootout, or what it seems like it could be tonight, more of a defensive stalwart. Tipped out of play, it'll stay with Lynchburg. 18 seconds on the shot clock, so still early on in the possession for the Hornets. Dow Dunn has just subbed in for the first time tonight. Only one starter still on the floor for the Hornets, and that's Izzy Lockamy. Bullock, another tough look. And again, no good. Afoso had awesome one. Nearly lost it. Now in the hands of Trent Dawson, a sophomore from Percival, Virginia. An awesome one. Defended by Dunton. Floater. Kissed off the glass. Maroons up 11. And with Lynchburg now 0-14 from the floor, this certainly is the coldest stretch at any point all year long as Bullock makes it 0-15. And we're talking about seven and a half plus minutes without any point, not even a free throw. Obviously the longest scoreless stretch this year for Lynchburg. 
Well contested by Parham, forces the miss from Price. Taylor trying to back down Trip Green, make that Draper. Dunton in the low post. Parham has a step on Price. Offensive rebound and a whistle blown as Dunton couldn't convert the second chance opportunity, but just under 12 minutes to go in the first half, Dunton has a chance at the free throw line. Holt Lynchburg in the scoring column, and here's another look at the possession, and maybe there should have been a shooting foul against Parham. We'll let you decide at home. Dunton does get the foul call. And a player that's been making strides at the free throw line this season knocks down the first. And from beginning of the season, there were two players I always saw in the gym. A handful of players I frequently saw in the gym, but there was two I always saw here at Wayne Profit Court, one of which was Dow Dutton standing at the free throw line, looking to improve his game in this specific area. And he goes two for two. Deficit back down to single digits. Joshua Morris with the basketball in his hands. Now he'll set the screen left. Price for an awesome one. Three-point heave. No good. Rebound for Parham. We'll see Justin Elkin check out the next dead ball for Lynchburg. Lockamy. Unable to get a clean look at the basket. Backs it out to Suggs. Now with Dutton once more. Finds an open Miles Taylor. Shot fake. The long two. And the Hornets have their first made field goal of the night. Fans in attendance had to wait almost nine minutes of game time. But voiced their pleasure with the made bucket, making it a seven point game. Price works the baseline. Not a clean pass to Dawson. Otherwise, he might have had enough room to pull the shot. As Dawson drives to the free throw line, foul on the play. It'll go against Lynchburg. Fourth foul to go against the Hornets. Subs on for both teams. T.C. Thacker, Alex Fitch, Justin Elkin on for the Hornets. Subbing in for Taylor, Dunton, and Lockamy. Trip Green is back on the court for Roanoke. There's the foul going against Parham. Green from the corner, nothing but nylon. Lead back to double figures. Alex Fitch, first time. Seen him on the court tonight. He and Parham, two sharpshooters. as is Theron Suggs, who's fouled on this play. Suggs, fourth in the ODAC and threes made per game. Almost two and a half per contest. Nick Price, the guilty party. Suggs is gonna inbound from the baseline. Thacker for Parham. Another miss for the sophomore. The Hornets have not lost at home. They find themselves down by 13. Green, consecutive triples to go. Suggs finds Parham. Give a three, get a three. 17 to seven, Roanoke still out in front. Certainly some confidence for Parham. Shooters can be streaky. And that might have been the one to ignite a run for Parra. Denied from behind by Suggs. Suggs is such a special player. Not only do you get the offensive production, but you get the defensive side of his play too. Coming from behind to block the six foot seven junior, Ethan Rohan. The shot clock's at 18. It's going to be Price inbounding. Draper still looking for his first points tonight. 
He'll kick it over to Price. Lost it for a moment. Now the shot clock at seven. Draper, near side, low post. Thacker got his hands on the basketball from behind. They're going to call jump ball. Alternating possession gives it to the Hornets. Just under nine and a half minutes left in the first half. Suggs takes the screen from Thacker. Pick and pop. Good rotation from the Maroons. Thacker forced to hand it off to Lockamy. Those three grad players that have all touched the basketball this possession, scoreless between all three. Thacker. No good on the first attempt. Then off the foot. And out of play, last touch by the Madison Heights native. Draper looking for his first points. Won't get him here. Suggs collects the rebound. He's averaging four of those a game in transition. Fouled before the shot was put up. So no free throws coming for Suggs. And Stan, an inbound for Lynchburg. Fourth foul to go against Roanoke. Both teams with four fouls at this point in the first half. Doesn't look like we're on our way to the bonus anytime soon. Inbound goes out to Elkin. Picks up his dribble, looking for help. Has it. Lockamy down to Thacker. This point, game TC Thacker 0 for 4, make it 0 for 5. From the floor. Green open for 3. In and out, putback attempt to miss Guinea for Rohan. Then turned over. Fitch for Lockamy, back to Suggs for 3. Indeed. You hear the crowd getting into it. Suggs brings it to a seven point game. Rohan working against Elkin. Shot clock's at 10. Draper to the cup, leaves it short. Draper has been uber efficient shooting the basketball this year. 49.5%, but it has not been his night so far. Talked about Thacker 0 for 5, Draper 0 for 4. Suggs heaves it up, tries it again. Won't see it fall this time around. An awesome one. He's been the guy offensively in the game in general, but certainly for the Maroons. He's now into double figures with 10. Timeout on the floor. It's a media timeout. We'll step aside. 19 to 10. Hornets working their way back into it. Don't go anywhere. Plenty more to watch between the Hornets and the Maroons on LHSN. Seven minutes and 17 seconds left to go in the opening half of play. 19 to 10, Roanoke out in front. 
The lead has diminished at one point. It was 11-0, and that was at the 12.47 mark in the first half. But then over the next five and a half minutes, Lynchburg able to cut in the deficit at least by two points to where we are now. Now just down nine, but most importantly, gotten points on the board. Field goal percentage still not at a pretty mark. Three of 22 shooting so far for Lynchburg, 13.6%. But Sir beats the over. Lynchburg found themselves after the first almost nine minutes of play. Lockamy open in the corner. Off the back iron, rebound for Green. Fred Dawson's looking for help. Green gives it right back. Draper over the hot hand at Awesome One. Lofts it up. Rohan with two hands flushes it home. Roanoke pushes the lead back into double digits at 11. First two points for Rohan. Taylor lost it for a moment. Parham has plenty of range, thought about the shot. Stead gives back to Taylor, stops, pops, won't see a drop. Off, it's a rebound for potentially the smallest man on the court, Izzy Lockamy. Extra possession for the Hornets. Suggs unable to convert. Big game for both sides. Chance to climb up the Odak standings. Erno comes in the day, tied for eighth in the conference. Lynchburg currently fourth in those standings. Less than six to go in the first half. An awesome one. Little strong. Parham lines up the triple. Off the backboard, rattled around off the rim, and no good. Dawson won't get the mid-range jumper to fall, and after a scorching start for the Roanoke offense, it has certainly cooled down. Nice pass. Carrington Young finds Miles Taylor to make it 21-12. To continue that point, Roanoke now just shooting 9 to 24 from the floor. That's under 38%. Far cry from where this game started. Draper. Gets his first made bucket. And he has not had an inch of space to this point in the game, and I wouldn't expect to see him with many open looks tonight. Same could be said for Suggs, but on consecutive possessions, Straper and Suggs do their thing. After two, tra two teams trade buckets, offensive foul called on Draper. It certainly looked like, from my perspective, Draper did not have his feet set. Instead, a moving screen slash trip to the corner. Seeing that more and more frequently in modern basketball. Fifth foul to go against Roanoke as a team. First to go against Draper. Cam Savage checks back in. Gives Theron Suggs a chance to catch his breath. And Trip Green checks out for Roanoke, bringing Nick Price back to the court. At the top of the broadcast, I know the last time that Lynchburg won at home against Roanoke was back in 2016. February of that year, 160 to 156 in double overtime. And even if we get double OT tonight, I don't think that's the type of basketball game we're in for this evening. Last time overall the Hornets took down the Maroons was in 2018. 90 to 85 final score, another offensive slugfest. Travel on the court, and another timeout follows it. Called by Coach Hillary Scott, allows me to talk about the coaches for both teams. Sixth year head coach Clay Nunnally, 10th head coach in program history, and just the fifth since 1967, really speaks to the standards that this Roanoke program has had throughout the decades. And three of the four prior head coaches to Nunnally had been there at least 12 years, and each are Hall of Famers, those three of the four preceding Nunnally, including Paige Muir, who Nunnally is replacing now. And of course, we talked about on the top of the broadcast, previously the head coach at Randolph College from 2007 to 2016, reached the NCAA tournament after the 2012-2013 season and was a 
three-time participant in the ODAC championship game with the Wildcats, also the 2010-2011 ODAC and South Region Coach of the Year. And on the other side, if you're a Lynchburg fan, you know all about head coach Hillary Scott, graduate from Roanoke, and year over year has seen this Hornets program build upon its success. Lockamy step back, three, count it. Is he cash? Never a doubt about it. The deficit's down to six. Thacker was down on the court after the play, and he's called for the foul. Fans in attendance voiced their displeasure with that call. Fifth foul to go against Lynchburg. First against Thacker. Looks like he got tangled up with Draper, the tail end of that play. See some of the fans in attendance. Next week, classes begin once again for the University of Lynchburg, so get accustomed to seeing the student section have the court filled to near max capacity. Even a southern solid gathering on the far side, typically for Lynchburg residents, parents, anyone who's not a student. Less than four minutes to go in the first half. Hornets get another stop. Taylor in transition. Couldn't handle the pass initially. It forced an awkward layup attempt. And Roanoke back the other way at Awesome One. Picks up his dribble, has Draper. Mid-range Jay in the face of Young. Left short. Transfer from Farum. Euro step. The runner just off the front of the rim. That's the advantage of having Carrington Young on the court. He is a guard slash forward, so it gives you a ton of flexibility, and he has more than enough confidence bringing the basketball up the length of the court all by himself. Here, Young on the defensive side. Price misses the gimme. T.C. Thacker defended by Rohan. Now a second defender in the form of Dawson, fading away. T.C. Thacker on his sixth attempt of the night has his first made bucket. But it looks like T.C. Thacker might be banked up after that play. And that would be a huge injury for Lynchburg. He's still on the court. Now he picks up the ball handler, Dawson, who gathers his dribble. Draper over to Price, back to Draper. Shot clock at eight, and a travel called. Fifth turnover of the night for Roanoke, both teams with five turnovers to this point in the game. Clock stops with 2.22 to go in the first half. Here's the made shot by Thacker, and as he went down the length of the court and got on the defensive side, he was favoring one of his elbows. Might just be a stinger at the end of a well-defended shot made. We will certainly keep you up to date as this game progresses. Lockamy finds Savage. Still looking to break into the scoring column. Won't get it there, perfectly defended by Price, but the Hornets get another possession, but the shot clock did not reset. It's down to three. Thacker is going to have to put it up quick. Rohan with the block, and as it's tipped away and nobody gained possession, it's a shot clock violation. Brandon Ellington checks back in for Roanoke. now with it swings over to Draper. It's only those two points so far. Averaging almost 20 a game coming into tonight. Green lost it. He has eight so far. This shot attempt no good. Rebound for Justin Elkin. Less than 90 seconds to play in the first half. Lynchburg can make it a one possession game with a made basket here. Suggs denied by Rohan.
I've mentioned it multiple times. Coach Scott talked about the physicality that Roanoke plays with. Called him hard-nosed. I think that's certainly been on display tonight. Lynchburg's going to get another possession after the miss from Lackamy. Went out of play last touched by, I believe, Draper. Suggs slaps the basketball and swings it into Fitch. Sizing up Ellington instead. Gives to Suggs. Five points so far for the Raleigh, North Carolina native. Thacker. Bread and butter from that spot. And it is indeed a one possession contest. 23 to 21. Rono can go two for one here. 45 seconds left in the first half. Ellington gets a screen right, pick and pop for Draper. Price drives in, green for three. Nothing but the bottom of the net. The shot clock turns off with nearly a full possession's worth of time for Lynchburg to work with. Suggs. Had Price in the air instead, sends it to the corner. Fitch heavily contested three, no good. Five seconds for Roanoke to work with. Green pulls the trigger. Has to touch the rim twice and no good. And that is how the first half will come to a close. It was an 11-0 run to start the game for Roanoke. That lead has certainly dissipated and it's now at a five point margin. 26-21 as we have reached halftime. Don't go anywhere. We'll step aside and come back with some stats and figures from the first 20 minutes of play. You're watching Roanoke and Lynchburg on LHSN. If I'm walking around over on the crowd side, I always hear someone yelling, hey, Nat, take our picture, hey, Nat, get this, or something, or hey, Nat, you got that shot? Like, um, so I'm always like trying to photograph the crowds and my friends calling my name. I think sports at Lynchburg unifies us as a whole, no matter what background we come from, what differences we have, and what experience we've experienced through our lives. It brings us all together and we have one goal, which is to win. As a photographer, I definitely get to capture the emotion and the feel and the atmosphere of what's going on during the games and what's happening in the crowd and with the fans. We have hugely dedicated fans here at Lynchburg. They come out, whether it's rain, snow, sleet, windy, no matter what, like they will come out and support their team and cheer them on. They will sit through anything. <laughs> It's just, it brings us all together as one. For a school that could provide me with the athletics, academics to pursue my career, a wind symphony to pursue my passion for music, and really have a nice uh, general atmosphere. The professors here are really unique, they, their background and their passion for teaching. It's really a place where you can explore. Uh, it, Lynchburg gives you the opportunity 
to fail, but also get back up in that period of time and, and learn from your mistakes. I can make these mistakes within the school environment, but also uh, with the support of other friends and be ready for the real world when you graduate. The biggest thing that I've taken from Westover is probably my interactions with faculty. I started working with Dr. Fryer. He's always available for help and he makes sure that I get to do the experiments and not just be there while he does them. I didn't want to limit myself when I came here to just taking the prereqs for med school. I wanted to get a full, well-rounded education and I definitely found that in the Westover program. It's given me the opportunity to keep playing soccer at a competitive level, uh, but also it's given me the ability to be a student and to pursue other activities such as EMS. hundred percent do Westover because it's not something they're going to regret and it's going to be a lot of work, but so is everything else. It's just going to help build their education that they've already had and make them a better person for it. Welcome back to Lynchburg, Virginia. 26-21, your score at the break. Roanoke out in front of Lynchburg. Big game for both teams. Roanoke looking to make a consecutive wins. Meanwhile, Lynchburg, first time all year, has dropped two games in a row, and today looking to avoid a potential three-game losing streak. Show you some of the stats from the first 20 minutes of action. And it really was split up into about 10-minute groups. The first 10 minutes of play was all Roanoke. And their offense was playing efficient, and in specific, Afasa and Asamoan was really stellar to start this game for the Maroons. And Lynchburg went almost nine minutes without any scoring. And then Dow Dunton got a point at the free throw line, two points to be specific. And then a couple minutes later, you got your first field goal for the Hornets. And in the next 10 minutes, it started to even out and started to positively grasp toward the mean. Still not fully there for a team that shoots almost 46% from the floor. But progress was made for Lynchburg. And Evident by starting the game down 11 nothing, and now only down by five at the break. Two teams every other category, pretty much even. The rebound battle, very close, and when it comes to offensive rebounds, that's been an area of a strength so far for the Hornets. You've heard me say offensive rebound Thacker a multitude of times tonight. Currently nine offensive boards for Lynchburg, just two for Roanoke, but where the problems come, nine offensive rebounds has got to generate more than two second chance points. And if you're wondering, Roanoke without any second chance points to this point in the contest. Turnover battle also even to this point in the contest. So there are some of the team stats. We'll take a quick pause, show, come back and show you some of the highlights from the first 20 minutes. And we'll talk about some of the individual numbers from the first half. Don't go anywhere. Plenty more to watch between the Maroons and the Hornets on LHSN. Be ready for anything, OK? Come on, let's go together. Together, let's go.
Just about six minutes until we reach the second half between Roanoke and Lynchburg. Maroons up by five at the break. You're watching this game on the Lynchburg Hornet Sports Network. It's DJ Wingard here with you. And we appreciate you spending some time with us on your Thursday evening. We're going to show some highlights from the first half, and I'll talk about some of the individual stats from the first 20 minutes of play. And when you talk about individuals, for Roanoke, it's really been a two-man show on the offensive side. Trip Green with 11. That's a game high. And then... Abosa and Awesome One also in a double figures with 10. He was the first player to hit that double digit mark in the scoring column tonight. And those two players, if you're doing your math, that's 21 of the 26 points so far for Roanoke. And that is a staggering possession. And really, when you look at Green, 11 points, he's made three threes already. So a lot of his generated from opportunities created by players like an Awesome One, Draper, Price, who's been a primary ball handler for the majority of the night for Roanoke. And get those spot shooters adding into what you got from Ed Awesome One. You hope to get more production from Draper in the second half. That would be the key to success for Roanoke once we get there. We'll talk adjustments in a little bit. Meanwhile, for Lynchburg, it's been a team effort. You can certainly say that. Theron Suggs leads the way with five points. Two of eight shooting from the floor, but if you're a Hornets fan, you know he's prone to heat up at any moment. Then it's four points for Miles Taylor and T.C. Thacker. Thacker also two for eight from the floor so far. Izzy Lockamy with three points. Same can be said about Jordan Parm. And then two points provided by Dow Dutton to open the scoring for the Hornets at the free throw line. There are some of the individual numbers in the offensive column. Nine rebounds already for T.C. Thack. We talked about how much he's done on the offensive side as well. Also, leading rebounder for Roanoke. Seven so far for Ethan Rohan. It's been really fun to watch Rohan and Thacker battle. Also want to shout out an awesome one. Six rebounds at this point. So, He's been doing it in a lot of other areas just besides scoring the basketball. And one final note before we step aside and come back with the second half of play. This is not the only game being played around the ODAC tonight. Two other games being played, including Virginia Wesleyan and Farmville, Virginia, to take on Hampton City. Marlins lead the Tigers 34-30 to at the break. And the other game being played is Randolph taking on Farum. And Randolph with a 16-point advantage at the break, 42 to 26. I just want to give you some of those updates from around the conference and how that might play a factor in the standings shaking out, including this contest, moving teams around as well. We're going to step aside one final time and come back. We'll talk adjustments and bring you to the second half play between the Hornets and the Maroons. All that and more on LHSN. If I'm walking around over on the crowd side, I always hear someone yelling, hey, Nat, take our picture. Hey, Nat, get this or something. Or, hey, Nat, you got that shot? Like, um, so I'm always like trying to photograph the crowds and my friends calling my name. I think sports at Lynchburg unifies us as a whole, no matter what background we come from, what differences we have, and what experience we've experienced through our lives. It brings us all together and we have one goal, which is to win. As a photographer, I definitely get to capture the emotion and the feel and the atmosphere of what's going on during the games and what's happening in the crowd and with the fans. We have hugely dedicated fans here at Lynchburg. They come out, whether it's rain, snow, sleet, windy, no matter what, like they will come out and support their team and cheer them on. They will sit through anything. <laughs> it's just, it brings us all together as one.
The biggest thing that I've taken from Westover is probably my interactions with faculty. I started working with Dr. Fryer. He's always available for help and he makes sure that I get to do the experiments and not just be there while he does them. I didn't want to limit myself when I came here to just taking the prereqs for med school. I wanted to get a full, well-rounded education and I definitely found that in the Westover program. It's given me the opportunity to keep playing soccer at a competitive level, um, but also it's given me the ability to be a student and to pursue other activities such as EMS. hundred percent do Westover because it's not something they're going to regret and it's going to be a lot of work, but so is everything else. It's just going to help build their education that they've already had and make them a better person for it. Twenty-six to twenty-one, your score as we get ready for the second half of action between Roanoke College and the University of Lynchburg. Maroons hold the advantage after twenty minutes, out in front of the Hornets by five. Let's talk adjustments as we get you ready for the second half on LHSN. Starting with the visiting Maroons and really the offensive production from start to finish in the first half. You're just looking from a box score perspective. Not terrible, maybe you'd like to see a little bit more even, balanced offensive production. Obviously that starts with Casey Draper. You, you would hope that he shoots a little better than one of seven from the floor. And then if you have a rotation of Green, an awesome one, and Draper down the stretch, I think that's enough offense to carry you down the way in what's been a very defensively focused game to this point. And on the other side for Lynchburg, really, it comes down to your key players knocking down shots down the rest of this contest. Suggs, if you're familiar with this Lynchburg program, not often you'll see him shoot 20%, 25%, I should say, from the floor in a game. Same thing for T.C. Thacker. They're both 2 of 8 from the floor at this point in the contest, and that is just an anomaly, anomaly and not something that's normally sustainable on a defensive side for an opposing squad. So for Lynchburg and for Roanoke, your key players have got to convert on any sort of looks, and you're probably not going to get a whole lot of open looks, but it's who can knock down contested shots down the rest of the way. Here an open look, and it's Trip Green. Moving up to 14 points, a game high, and his fourth three-point shot to go. Green had 13 points last game. And had a season-high three threes. Well, he's now set a new season best with four trifectas so far. The fake and the slam, T.C. Thacker with the hammer. That gets the crowd into it to start the second half. Green down low. Draper tangled up with Suggs. Jump ball called. Hornets take over possession. Here's the slam again from Thacker. And an awesome one was in the vicinity, but you could see him at the last moment not fully commit to contesting that slam. And avoiding a potential poster. Savage went scoreless in the first half. Locking me over to Carrington Young. It's the original starting five on the floor right now for Lynchburg. Young trying to thread a needle to Thacker, unable to do just that. Price finds that awesome one. Backing down the smaller defender, Lockamy, and a floater. Gives two more to an awesome one. He's got 12 on the night. More importantly for Roanoke, lead up to eight. Lockamy looking to respond. Denied by an awesome one. Pinned off the glass. Green in transition. Finds Price, who will slow down the tempo for Roanoke. Roanoke, the number two scoring defense in the ODAC, holding opponents to just over 62 points per contest. An awesome one for three, rattles out. Good late contest from Suggs. Savage for Lockamy. Pulls it back. Hornets bring it to the near side. Suggs, step back, three. Little strong on this attempt, rebound for Nick Price. Senior averaging a little over three of those per game. That board good for his second on the night.
An awesome one, once again working against Lockamy in the low post. Lockamy holds his own. Shot clock's at five. Price gives to Draper, sets a screen, flushes home the long two. Just the second made shot tonight for Casey Draper. Lockamy for Savage, looked in the direction of Thacker. Sealing off Rohan. Mid-range jumper, knocked down, back to an eight-point contest. Thacker with a Hornet best, eight. Young called for the foul. Combo player from Burlington, North Carolina, not happy being called for the foul, but it's going to send Nick Price to the free throw line. Price one for two from the stripe so far tonight. 58.6% free throw shooter coming into the contest. His first attempt, dumping on the way and through. Moving the lead out to nine. And Price, one of five players to reach the scoring column so far for Roanoke. Lynchburg has had six. Garner at least one point tonight. Lowest score is Dow Dunn with two. All that to say, points have been in a premium. And going two for two from the free throw line as this game progresses. Those are big plays. And the Maroons have been really aggressive on those screens at the perimeter. Right at the three-point line, you'll see that defender hedge the screen and go over top and defend the three-point shot all night long. Dunton gets a couple of attempts, unable to convert on either. No-look pass, that awesome one feeds Draper. And junior up to six on the night. Lead stretch to 12. Suggs for Savage, lining up the three off the side of the rim. And Rohan gathers another rebound, his eighth tonight. Lynchburg needs a stop. Into the hands of Price. Gives to it awesome one. Price gets past Savage, maybe one pass too many. Skips it past Rohan and out of play. Eleven four start to the second half for Roanoke. Jordan Parm, first time touching the hard wood in the second half. Savage for mid range. Counted from the elbow, and that's really Cam Savage's strength. Seen him put up a couple of three-point shots, but when he's getting to the elbow and living from the free throw line or thereabout, he's got a clean pull-up mid-range jump shot. And he's got a quick trigger, too, on a fluid motion. It allows him to be able to pull those contested mid-range jumpers and sink them. Tough finish for Draper. Count it, 39-27, Maroons in front of the Hornets. Suggs had it poked away by Price. An awesome one. Able to knock down the layup just ahead of T.C. Thacker, nearly able to get the block from behind. Timeout on the floor will send us to our first media timeout of the second half. Roanoke was up five at the break, stretching the lead now to 14. Don't go anywhere. Plenty more to watch between Lynchburg and Roanoke on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Hi, Mara Willis. How are you? Pretty good. <laughs> A lot of people go to the universities 
to find something to be a part of while getting their education. And when you come here, Lynchburg is that something, it becomes a family. It doesn't matter how long ago you had your professor, they still remember you and they remember all of the hard work that you put in. They're always there for you and they always want to do the best that they can to help you succeed. Here you fourteen twelve left to be played between Lynchburg and Roanoke. The Maroons preseason number twenty D three hoops.com national poll and inside the ODAC picked to finish second. They even received one of the twelve first place votes. Another 11 go to the number one team in the country, Randolph Macon, who Lynchburg battled hard against on Saturday. Led at the break 40 39. Things fell apart in the second half. Here in the second half of tonight's contest, it was 26 21 at the break, and Roanoke has come out hot to start the second set of 20. Winning the half so far 15 6. Foul on the floor. First to go against Roanoke in the second half. Ethan Cathan checks out, and then Rohan subs back in. Noel Bullock, the inbounder, and as Thacker receives the pass, Rohan picks up the second foul for Roanoke. And we saw a lot of physical play in the first half. Neither team made it to the bonus regardless. Tonight's officiating crew made it clear they were going to let the two sides duke it out. Now a couple of fouls go against the Maroons and about a five second game time span. Make it three in about eight seconds. This one goes against that awesome one. Cussed his first on the night. Lynchburg first in the ODAC in free throw shooting percentage. And with 13.57 to go, already three fouls against the Maroons. Might have a pathway to cutting into the 14 point deficit by virtue of the bonus. And eventually, if you get successful enough at drawing those fouls, into the double bonus. Thacker finds Bullock, pass fake. Gets inside the painted area, no good. Offensive rebound and put back two for TC Thacker. He becomes the first player for Lynchburg to reach double figures. And once again, Offensive rebound for Thacker. And he has all four second chance points so far tonight for the Hornets. Off of their 11 O boards. Draper can't find any room. Shot clock down to seven. Green lets it fly. Off the front of the rim it goes. Rebound for Taylor. Bullock to Fitch for three. Won't fall this time. The junior from Ashburn, Virginia. Nice spin. Left-handed finish at awesome one. The game I 16. Tenth time this year that an awesome one has reached double figures. He had 13 two games back against Washington and Lee, 15 against Farham last game here with another rebound. His eighth on the night, double double watch for sure. Gives to Draper, who becomes the third Baroon to reach double digits. He's got 10. 16 point contest. Parham for three. No good. Lynchburg has had a hard time shooting the basketball from beyond the arc. Four, excuse me, three of 16 now, and on the other end, bucket and the foul. To call it awesome on hot would be an understatement. Takes on Fitch. It's enough contact to draw the foul, not enough to avoid the make. No man's land as a defender. An awesome one. Head to the free throw line for the first time this evening. 
There's a chance to push the lead to a game high mark at 19. Waxhaw, North Carolina product, unable to convert, but an offensive rebound keeps it with Roanoke. Draper couldn't handle initial pass, shot clock down to four. But then forced to beat the buzzer. Bullock swings over to Taylor. Fitch gets to the free throw line, backs it out to Suggs. Theron Suggs, just one shot attempt so far in the second half. Almost nine minutes through. The second set of 20. Fitch, deep three, whistle on the play. It's not on the shot as Fitch did make the three-point shot. Would have been the fourth made three ball tonight. Instead, foul called against Taylor. And becomes turnover number eight to go against the Hornets. Pretty Roanoke viewers wondering. Season and career high for Ed Osamuan is 27, so he's got some work to do to reach that total. Ellington finds Dawson. Offensive foul. Goes against Dustin Cathan, who Played at least 11 minutes in every game tonight, but we've seen him sparingly this evening. He had reached double figures in three consecutive games so far tonight. He's been held scoreless, so for four from the floor. Hornets run out of time. The offense needs to find its Find its gear and needs to do so quickly. Bullock remains scoreless after the miss, and Trent Dawson also scoreless. Bounce pass, bucket and the foul for Draper. Perfectly executed for Dawson. The second he sees Taylor start to slide towards the basket to potentially contest the layup. He knows he's got Draper with an opening. And Junior does the rest, but can't convert on the free throw. Tapped out of play by Ellington. Hornets down by 20 with 10.21 to go. Young gives to Bullock. Now it's Suggs. Can't find any space against Price. Young trying to loft it to Taylor, or taken away by Draper. Ellington to Dawson for three. Sophomore continues to struggle shooting the basketball. Dawson's coming off a season best, 15 minutes and six points last game. We've seen him a lot tonight, but no points to show for it. Draper is looking for points 13 and 14, won't get it on this possession. Fitch, stop, pop, three, drops. There was a whistle, Fitch hit the ground. The foul goes against Alex Fitch. He was looking for the whistle on the attempt as he was knocked to the ground. So Lynchburg gets their fourth made three ball of the night. Deficit, 17. Foul against Fitch, the fourth to go against the Hornets. TC Thacker checks back in, as does Ethan Rohan. And that matchup. We'll continue to play out Rohan versus Thacker. It's been a lot of fun to watch so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And awesome one, not on the floor now for Roanoke. He's been the hot hand of late. As has Draper, but here has it stripped by the combination of Thacker and Young. Young finds Suggs for three. Indeed. 8.56 left in regulation. Now a 14-point contest. Suggs gets his second three-point shot to fall, averaging more than 17 a game. You can't give that man that much space. He'll make you pay every time. A timeout on the floor. This is also a media timeout. We'll take a quick pause and come back with more between Roanoke and Lynchburg on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. The biggest thing that I've taken from Westover is probably my interactions with faculty. I started working with Dr. Fryer. He's always available for help and he makes sure that I get to do the experiments and not just be there while he does them. I didn't want to limit myself when I came here to just taking the prereqs for med school. I wanted to get a full, well-rounded education and I definitely found that in the Westover program. It's given me the opportunity to keep playing soccer at a competitive level, uh, but also it's given me the ability to be a student and to pursue other activities such as EMS. A hundred percent do Westover because it's not something they're going to regret and it's going to be a lot of work, but so is everything else. It's just going to help build their education that they've already had and make them a better person for it. Forty-nine, thirty-five. Your score. Roanoke out in front of Lynchburg, but coming out of the timeout after Theron Suggs knocked down his second trifecta in the evening, he's got eight points. We'll take the opportunity to let you know. T.C. Thacker, ten points, ten rebounds. Good for his well, tenth double-double on the year. He came in the day first in the ODAC in that statistical category, thirteenth in the country, and will certainly move up that leaderboard, barring all twelve ahead of him getting double doubles as well. Playback underway, less than nine minutes left in regulation. The margin for error is very slim for the Hornets. Especially when we consider how efficient Roanoke has been maintaining possessions, only eight turnovers thus far. Got that field goal percentage back up to just under 45% from the floor. And awesome one back on the court. He takes this shot and sinks it just in front of the free throw line. He's now got 20 points. Making up nearly 40% of the scoring production for Rono tonight. Big night for the junior from Beltsville, Maryland. Thacker working against Rohan. Lockamy with eight seconds on the shot clock. Heaves the three, touches the rim twice, rebound for Draper. Three point shooting woes have been there all night long. Five of 19 now for Lynchburg. That's. 26.3% down from the 35.8% mark Hornets were sitting at prior to the contest starting. That awesome one. Unable to back down Young. Tough shot. Won't see it fall. Suggs, the free throw line. Tries to get the offensive rebound. Ball still loose. Gathered by Price. Three on two the other way. An awesome one. Finds Price. Right-handed layup. Makes it an 18-point game. Another timeout called at the 7-12 mark. That'll bring us to our final media timeout of the night. Maroons up by 18. Lynchburg going to need a big comeback effort. Get back into this one. Don't go anywhere. Plenty more to watch between the Maroons and the Hornets on LHSN.
Back for the final stanza between Lynchburg and Roanoke. Maroons certainly in the driver's seat looking to make it back-to-back -back wins after they topped Farum two nights ago. Final score 84 to 60. Meanwhile, the Hornets in jeopardy of suffering their third consecutive loss and potentially falling to eight and five on the season and they would move to two and two inside conference play. Lynchburg has possession coming out of the media break. Pick and pop, Trey Pittman, first time calling his name tonight, has it rattle out. And the Roanoke Maroons have been a little slow tempoed on the offensive side, especially when setting up in the half court. As I say that, a shot put up with 17 seconds on the shot clock. At awesome one fouled on his way up. He's headed to the line for two. But especially down the stretch, 6.51 left in regulation. I wouldn't venture to see Roanoke in too much of a rush. Here's a look at the foul going against Lockamy. Unfortunate timing. Go against the grad student from Wake Forest, North Carolina. He was trying to time up the dribble with the right hand. Instead, though, there's an awesome one going up with the shot. So pretty clear reach slash shooting foul. An awesome one, no good on the first attempt. been his one area weakness to this point in the season. Under a 61% free throw shooter, and he goes 0 for 2. Fortunate break for Lynchburg. Parham works his way out of the corner, gives to Suggs. Near side corner, Lockamy, nothing but the bottom of the net. His second three ball to go tonight. Green set by Draper, he then gets the pass. Price finds Green, one of three players for Roanoke in double figures. Green, second Maroon to hit double digits. Price drives in, Green lines up the triple. He's got four of those tonight. Won't see the fifth fall in this possession. Thacker drives in, had it poked away by an awesome one. Back out to Lynchburg's number 10, Parham. Goes right back to Thacker in the face of Rohan. No good. Offensive rebound, Suggs. Off the glass and in. And Lynchburg, inch by inch, trying to make it a game. Down by 13. Pittman unable to get the steal. Draper. Give him the layup, plus the contact on top. It was a slow start to the game for Draper. Only two points at halftime on one of seven shooting. But now, as you see the offensive rebound and put back for Suggs, Draper sits at 14, good for second most of any player. And if he knocks down his first free throw attempt on the night, he does not. He'll stay at 14. My point becomes irrelevant. Draper now 0 for 2 from the line. Suggs gets his way to the cup, plus the contact. I mentioned it in the first half, but when I've talked to Theron Suggs, he made mention Kobe Bryant being his inspiration. And this certainly feels like a play and a moment reminiscent of the late great Black Mamba. And Suggs, as well as Thacker, Lynchburg in general working themselves back into it. It's a 12-point contest. Darren Suggs now with the team best 13. The crowd reinvigorated. An awesome one. Loses it. Gathered by Rohan. Price drives against Thacker. Lockamy with a step on an awesome one. Dumps it off for Pittman. Unable to knock down the shot from outside the restricted circle. Less than four and a half to play. And 
And Coach Nunnally signaling over to Price. You see on your screen to slow down the tempo. Rohan cuts. <laughs> Foul on his way up. Stops the clock at 4-11. Let's you be the judge at home. Foul goes against Pittman. Ethan Rohan ready to the line. His first trip to the stripe tonight on the season, shooting less than 64%. No good on the first. That foul, by the way, the seventh to go against Lynchburg. So any whistle that goes against the Hornets, the Hornets, excuse me, here on out, you will see a maroon head the line for at least one. Shooter's touch, one for two trip for Rohan. Suggs thought about it after getting the screen from Thacker. Instead, pick, pop, Pittman steps it back. Unable to knock it down. Roanoke up by 13, and an awesome one. Abruptly slows down just before crossing half court and finds his point guard, Nick Price. Six helpers for Price so far tonight. Picked up by Suggs. Shot clock's at eight. Draper looking for space against Thacker. Puts up the shot, draws the foul. And that'll stalwart a lot of momentum and progress Lynchburg has made, especially if Draper able to go two for two. First attempt up and through. Draper now one for three from the line tonight. He's got 15 points, second most of any player for Roanoke, because Alex Fitch is going to check in for Pittman. 327 left until the conclusion. You see Clay Nunnally talking with one of our officials this evening. Nothing but nylon for Draper, 15 point contest. Suggs picks up his dribble. Fitch sailed the pass initially to Thacker, but then Thacker fouled. That's the sixth foul to go against Roanoke. Next one will send Lynchburg to the line for the one and one. But with 3.18 to go, an inbound from Suggs sends Fitch retreating back towards midcourt. Suggs drives, kicks it out. Lockamy for three. Short, touches the iron a second time. Rebound for Price. And now Roanoke sets up in the half court, and again, you will not see this offense in any sort of a rush. Six seconds to the shot clock. Draper. Now got 18. Draper has scored in double digits in every game played this year. And tonight becomes game number 10 with more than 15. Here's the foul. So that will send Theron Suggs to the free throw line. Lynchburg down 17, 231 to play. Front end of a one on one is knocked down by Suggs. He's now two for two from the line tonight. Now a 15 point game. And a timeout called by Coach Hillary Scott. And we find ourselves at an interesting point in the contest where there is no larger dichotomy. Roanoke will try to milk every single possession. That they can and use the full 30 if at all possible. Meanwhile, Lynchburg is looking to get set and try to put up a shot before probably 20 seconds into the possession. And that's the beauty of late game basketball. 
Two and a half minutes left to go. The upcoming schedule for both teams, Lynchburg will be back at home taking on EMU, part of a men's and women's basketball doubleheader here on LHS. And meanwhile, Roanoke also in action on Saturday. They'll be back at home as well, taking on Hampton Sydney, who's currently in action against Virginia Wesley. That game was 34-30 at halftime. Now it's 57-56, just over five minutes to go in the second half. Only other game being played around the ODAC besides Virginia Wesley and Hampton Sydney, and the game you're watching currently is Randolph and Farrell. That game was 42-26 at halftime. And as we refresh, Farrell has certainly closed the margin. Now it's 63-59, so a couple of really close contests from around the conference. And Lynchburg looking to make this one. Another you can add into the mix. Down by 15, players back onto the court. The Roanoke possession. And Draper will inbound. He can move freely across the baseline. The Hornets used a little bit of full court pressure late in the game against Randolph Macon, and it looked pretty good. We only saw it for about a minute, minute and a half. Here, if you're a Hornets fan, you hope it generates some turnovers and extra possessions for you to cut into the margin. Roanoke's done a great job controlling the basketball. Able to get it across half court. Green draws the foul. It goes against Suggs. To my point, just eight turnovers tonight for Roanoke. For a team that averaged a little over 13 a game, that was fifth best in the ODAC. Second foul to go against Suggs. Ninth to go against Lynchburg as a team. So this is the final one and one that we'll see for the Maroons in the front end. Is knocked down. Green up to 15 on the night. Tonight, the fourth time he's reached double figures. Second free throw, no good. Pick and pop, Thacker for three. No good. Big miss for Lynchburg. Dawson fouled by Fitch. And we'll see a lot of these down the stretch. That's the tenth to go against the Hornets, so it's two free throws from here onward for Roanoke. Assuming the score holds, it'd be the seventh consecutive win for the Maroons against Lynchburg. First point of the night for Trent Dawson. He's a 71.4% free throw shooter for tonight's game. Dawson goes two for two. Now an 18 point margin for Roanoke. Parham over top of Green, knocks down the three. And another timeout called by Coach Hillary Scott, 151 to go. It's college basketball. Anything can happen. But it starts by creating a turnover on this next defensive sequence. Those were the type of shots Parham was hitting on Saturday against Randolph Macon. You can see the head roll there at the end of it. Showcasing some of the frustration I think Parham has felt throughout the majority of the night. He's now two for six from the floor, two for five from beyond the yard. And early on, Lynchburg was trying to get him the basketball and get him shots. And again, the emphasis from Coach Scott, and I relayed that in the top of the broadcast, three-point shooting is going to be key, and that is an area where the Hornets fell a bit short tonight. Seven of 26 from beyond the arc, 26.9%. And again, I go back to the Roanoke's most recent game against Ferrum. It was a close one at half. Two possession lead for the Maroons over the Panthers and a large part because Farum shot the basketball really well in the first half from the perimeter. Went eight of 19, that's 42.1%, but then in the second half, the Maroons had the right adjustments and held Farum three of 13 from three-point land, that's 23.1%, and that led to a 51 to 29 second half, quote unquote, victory for Roanoke and really what empowered them to win that game by 24. C. 
see Miles Taylor standing in front of Casey Draper. Defending the inbounder. Pass to the corner. Price gets Parham in the air. Green had Rohan wide open underneath the basket, but makes a smart basketball decision, gets it back out to Dawson, who's then fouled by Parham. And again, we'll see more free throws for Roanoke. Dawson went two for two last possession. First foul to go against Jordan Parham. Dawson knocks down the first, so they become first three-game losing streak of the season for Lynchburg. And it's a point in the season where it's safe to say the Hornets have battled a ton of adversity. First of those three losses was against Wooster, at Wooster, in a game that was supposed to be played against a different opponent, but COVID comes into play, and that's part of what makes this time so tumultuous for Lynchburg. Games against Guilford and Shenandoah forced to be moved. Same in a game against Ferrum. That'll be later this month. And who knows, maybe if you space those games in between a trip to Randolph-Macon and Roanoke, additional confidence. You avoid consecutive losses in a row. The story could be told in a lot of different ways based off how things line up. But instead, it's a 15 point lead for Roanoke with Dawson back at the free throw line. Charts to lead up to 16. So again, it's EMU on Saturday at two o'clock. Tip off, it'll be followed by women's basketball taking on the Royals at 4.30. Hope to have you with us here on LHSN. It'll be yours truly, run by Nathaniel Pierce, as my analyst for that contest. And then after that, Quick turnaround, hitting the road at Shenandoah for one of those rescheduled games. And staying on the road, but staying close to home on Wednesday the 26th at Randolph. Take on across town rival, the Wildcats. Another foul, this one goes against Lockamy. More free throws on the way. But if you're gonna come into a mid-season lull, or if you're gonna go into a lull at any point of the season, you want it to be in this point of the year. Lynchburg's going to fall to 8-5 and 2-2 and two and two in conference play, but those two conference losses against the number one team in the country and another that was preseason top 20 nationally and the number two pick inside the ODAC. So moral victories don't pay bills, but two losses against two tough opponents and more than plausible that Lynchburg sees at least one of those two once again come postseason time. with a great head coach and Hillary Scott. Four of your five starters are grad students. The other is a junior and a transfer at that. A lot of experience in this team and learning from losses. When you have a veteran bunch, certainly becomes a strength as the season progresses. Meanwhile for Roanoke, the win would move the Maroons to 11 and four in the season, three and three inside the ODAC and set up their game Saturday at home against Hampton Sydney. So Lynchburg will see on the first day of February for our Code Red game for men's basketball. And after the date with the Tigers, Wednesday the 26th, Roanoke will head to Shenandoah. Then be back at home on the 29th to take on Randolph. So two teams seeing similar opponents for the next handful of games. Suggs finds Fitch, fouled on his way up. Lynchburg now gets a chance at the free throw line. Fitch with three points tonight. It came on a made basket from the near side corner. From the free throw line this season, Fitch two for two. 45.2 seconds to go. Fitch knocks down the first. Second attempt knocked down. Takeaways from this contest. You saw Roanoke's bread and butter. 
be efficient enough on offense. 46% from the floor, that'll get the job done. Just under 31% from beyond the arc. Get to the free throw line 25 times. Sure, you'd like a better percentage than 60%, but 15 made free throws. That'll get the job done, especially when you play this well on the defensive side and hold a Lynchburg team that has more than enough offensive playmakers and an explosive in a lot of different ways. You hold Lynchburg to 29% field goal percentage and a sub-26% three-point percentage. Straper gets two more to his line. He's now got 21. Most of any player for Roanoke. To see that point, this is what Roanoke would want out of this type of game. Game script really favored them. If I should get out in front 11-0, got to play to their strength of their defense from that point onward. Parham takes the shot. Eve no good. Rebound turns off the shot clock. The Maroons will be able to dribble out the clock. Now for Lynchburg. Obviously not the result the Hornets would want. 17-point loss against Roanoke. The same margin of difference between Lynchburg and Randolph-Macon this past Saturday. But it's two losses in conference play. Following a loss at Wooster to end 2021. Three good opponents, three tough losses to swallow for Lynchburg. But there were still things to take away from this contest to be positive and happy about. I mean, down the stretch when you needed buckets, Theron Suggs, T.C. Thacker, you felt their presence, especially in the second half. Izzy locked me a couple of made shots. Parham finished the game with six, two made threes. It just didn't all come together. And really, you look back at that 11-0 run to start the game. And that feels, in large part, like the difference. So a tough way for Lynchburg to go into the weekend. But they'll be back in action on Saturday against Eastern Mennonite. A chance to end a three-game losing streak. Meanwhile, Roanoke also in action on Saturday at home against Hampton Sydney. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in on your Thursday evening. Hopefully you had a good job watching the broadcast. Appreciate you tuning in. For my director, Sam Rice, my name's TJ Winger, telling you one final time. Final score is 71 to 54. And until next time, we are signing off.